So, good morning. Um, so, we were talking about cyber resilience review. Uh, so, what I want to do first today is to actually show you a cyber resilience review we did uh, for IIT Kanpur in uh, the previous version of this class, where the class was divided into 10 groups. Each group did uh, one of the domains, right? And the way it worked is that they went to uh, the uh, CC and uh, uh, or actually they, they sent the questions to uh, uh, CC and, and they got responses and based on the responses they made their uh, uh, choices uh, and uh, then some result came out. If we do it today, uh, ideally I should have done it this time with you guys, but uh, for some reason things got a little bit delayed, so we do not have enough time to do it, because it requires about one and a half months or so to do it, because we cannot suddenly bombard the engineers who are already very busy to answer questions from 10 different groups. right? But anyway, so I want to show you what we got, not to just and just not to analyze what we got, but just to show you what it looks like to get a cyber resilience review. So, this is uh, the, uh, so they have a um, pre-designed uh, uh, PDF file that you can download. I have made it uh, available on the uh, class website, uh, where you can actually fill in things. Like for example, uh, you can see that, so you can see that uh, uh, we have uh, these buttons, which allows you to do a, a revision of the assessment or you know print the report. The report gets automatically generated by the program, uh, the scripts embedded into the PDF. So, uh, what we see here is, uh, so this is a kind of instruction. So, this is a this is what we call a self assessment report. So, there are there is there are two ways to do this report. One is self assessment, the organization itself does assessment uh, uh, by itself after having studied the uh, uh, the goals of each domain and practices in each domain and understanding and then asking the relevant stakeholders within the organization uh, about those practices, how well they are being uh, implemented etcetera. Uh, and then uh, you can generate the report. Another is to actually what is called a facilitated uh, assessment, where somebody from Homeland Security will come to your organization and you will have a all day or couple of days of uh, uh, workshop, where all the stakeholders will be present and the facilitators will actually explain each question and, and will actually uh, ask you for the answers and you as stakeholders who know about what is being done currently, will uh, talk about that, right. So, uh, so this was done like uh, in uh, November 2022. So, this is a uh, table of content is auto generated. Uh, this is some, um, uh, you know, DHS notification. So, this is overview and scope. Right. So, uh, as we will see that uh, it is very important to decide the scope, because see you can like uh, for example, if you are a bank, right. So, bank has many critical uh, functions, business processes. Uh, one is to for example, give out loans, right, loans processing. Another critical function is to uh, enable payments. Right. So, people do payments using uh, checks, using NEFT, using uh, IMPS, using RTGS, using UPI, using maybe uh, rupee credit card and so on. So, all these things are different processes, business, business processes and each of this there are certain goals in terms of service. For example, RBI requires that your uh, 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 mean uh, downtime per month should be no more than so many minutes, right, for a payment system or your uh, time to recovery, uh, if it goes down should be no more than this uh, number, right. And if it does uh, exceed 
that RBI stipulation, then they have to answer to RBI as to why uh, the, they exceeded the uh, stipulated time frame. Right? So, same thing with the loan processing, uh, you know there are certain goals for example, how fast uh, between the application and a decision it has to be, uh, what is the risk uh, level that you are allowed to take, what should be the goal for your non performing loans that is loans that are unlikely to come back etcetera. So, each uh, function of an organization will have different sets of goals. So, uh, now, uh, in, a, in an academic institute for example, we have a lot of important functions such as registration process right. Even though the registration process is only uh, in effect from uh, certain times right, so certain time windows it is in effect, but during the registration time we do not want like the registration process to uh, uh, shut down or, or crash. Uh, we do not want that uh, the registration uh, process uh, uh, does any mistake in terms of uh, assigning courses to uh, you know the one that you apply versus the one that you actually uh, is assigned. So, there are certain goals that has to be set. Now, when these goals are set then only you can think about the cyber security right. So, because if, the, if there is no goal set what is this of course, there is also data security, data privacy issue that you do not want at any cost any data to be leaked right. So, so that is irrespective of uh, you know business what business it is. Any time there is a personally identifiable information you do not want that to be leaked and today in India now we have the, uh, the uh, data privacy act uh, uh, passed it has not been notified yet, but once it is in effect then it will be it may cost according to the new law uh, DPDP act uh, it will be uh, up to 250 crores penalty per time this breach happens plus the eff uh, affected individuals can also sue the company and so on. So, so that is separate like the privacy and uh, data confidentiality, but other than that to get the businesses actually meeting its business goals uh, one has to actually then think about what are the risks to not achieving the goals. Each business process may have multiple different goals and you have to see what are the risks that will uh, stop me from achieving my goals. Uh, for example, in case of a payment system uh, if, if it is like 30 minutes per month that I can be down then what are the risks right. And among many risks there would be a risk about cyber right. So, not every risk is related to cyber for example, there, there may be a risk where uh, uh, you know the, uh, uh, the system may crash right, uh, just because it has become an old uh, um, uh, server or something or the server has, uh, has some uh, manufacturing defect. Uh, so, do we have uh, uh, you know backup server uh, you know uh, live, uh, live standby, so that if one crashes the other can take over within seconds and all that stuff. So, those risk mitigation which the unrelated to the cyber attack related risk. So, where what, what we are doing here is that saying that ok. So, among all the risks assuming that all the other risks are taken care of if I have this cyber risk and I get attacked and I get uh, uh, affected then I am gonna uh, am I going to be able to uh, still provide service and recover to normal service uh, uh, quality uh, in uh, as soon as possible and that that mean time to recover or mean time to uh, uh, you know perform may actually be also part of the business goals right. I, I may want to recover within maybe uh, 30 minutes or 1 hour or whatever. So, so here the, the question is what is the scope. So, uh, in the while this was done the scope was not very well defined. So, we have multiple different bus uh, businesses for example, uh, we have uh, not business business processes like registration is one payroll is another uh, Dean R and D automation office automation is another uh, there could be uh, automation of the uh, gates through which we uh, cars come into the uh, campus that is also a, an uh, automated uh, computerized system 
you have uh, power generation, uh, power transmission or power sorry power distribution plants, uh, substations across the uh, at, uh, at various locations in the campus, those are also possible uh, things and, and uh, sewage control, water pumping and all that stuff, all that stuff are business processes. Now, question is what is critical for or, uh, this organization, this organization now who will decide what is critical right. So, the board of governors will determine what is critical, you and I cannot determine like for example, as a resident of the campus if water does not come I get really uh, uh, you know inconvenienced and therefore, I could say that that is critical right, but actually uh, what is the business uh, in which uh, uh, this organization is uh, into and that is the education and uh, research uh, uh, business and therefore, uh, the criticality will be determined by that like uh, is, is it, is it uh, that our uh, we are will not be able to run courses or we will not be able to do registration during registration period or you will not be able to uh, process payroll uh, payments during the uh, payments, uh, payment uh, uh, cycle and things like that. Right? Uh, whether uh, you know the, the research uh, um, uh, expenditure etcetera cannot be done because office automation is not working or email system, the email system is very important for an academic institute to run, the email system may actually get broken uh, by a cyber attack then uh, or, or the email system may actually uh, be uh, used to spoof the users and then get into bigger uh, you know cyber attacks and so on. So, all these things you have to decide what scope in which you are trying to determine the resilience. Similarly, you can also do organizational scope. So, you do not necessarily have to do the scoping based on service. So, you can say I want to see these two services, the resilience of these two services, other services I do not care if it is resilient as long as it is uh, more or less resilient. So, I may not do this kind of minute analysis. Uh, but on the uh, another way to do this is to in you know, a organizational scope for example, I can decide that only the office automation is what I am uh, you know uh, the I want to do or or I want to only do computer science department right. So, I want to do the resilience of computer science department uh, because computer science guys are uh, you know asking for it right. So, that is the kind of scoping has to be done. In this case what happened is the scoping was done for everything right. So, almost like email to um, you know office automation to pingla to uh, uh, you know uh, payroll system accounting system uh, all that stuff right. So, this is little bit of um, uh, you know uh, uh, you know if you if you include everything in the scope like it is likely that your maturity will be very low because there will be some service in which the maturity is not very good but you get the lowest of the of all right your maturity level will be given the lowest of all the all the maturity levels for all the services right. So, here you will see that the maturity level that came out is actually not very high it was uh, it was one uh, maturity level out of uh, you know five different maturity levels uh, uh, we will see what the results are. And then we already have seen that these are the these are the domains in which I want to do this uh, uh, maturity uh, assessment. So, so there this is the report writer. So, this uh, team that worked on this. So, I basically made uh, actually 11 teams. So, 10 teams were actually doing filling out the assessment for 10 domains and then they were sending it to the last team and the last team was putting it together right. So, they did the final report generation and writing all this basic stuff. So, the so scoring is that every practice has three answers possibly yes I we, we are performing this practice or I am performing, but not to the fullest extent possible. So, incomplete or no means uh, that uh, this is not being done not answered is grey and not answered is not going to help much uh, in terms of uh, you know uh, it, it might as well be uh, read right. If you are not answered you assume that it is not being done. So, for every practice uh, we say that it is green 
when each domain, so this is for individual practice. So, individual practices can be uh, eventually be colored green, yellow, red or grey and then you can say that uh, for the overall domain, what is the overall domain's performance, it has to see if all practices are performed then only the domain gets green. So, even if you miss one practice out of let us say 15 practices for that domain, then you cannot get green partially when some practices are performed. So, yellow, so if, if uh, even if you miss one, you will get yellow and, uh, and if no practices are performed, then it is red, right. So, it is red means really bad, no practice is being performed. And then each, uh, there is also a maturity level. So, practices are performed or not performed or, um, you know, uh, semi performed, right. But domains, uh, then domains become that based on uh, whether all practices are performed or some practices are performed or no practices are performed. But the maturity level is how the practices are implemented, right. So, mil 0 really bad only some goals are achieved, right. So, uh, mil 0 means that, uh, that there are domains uh, for each domain there are some practices or some goals for which uh, actually uh, no uh, uh, you know some all practices are achieved. Uh, if all goals are achieved for a particular domain, then that means that all practices are being done, then I get mil 1. So, for a domain let us say there are, uh, there are 5 goals and let us say there are 20 practices across all the goals. If I do, I am doing all the practices that is all the practices are green, then that particular goal will be achieved and then if all goals are achieved for a particular domain, then we will say it is in the first maturity level. Then if I want to see, uh, if I am bet, I want to be better than first maturity level, then I have to not only get uh, all the uh, mil 1 that is I have to get all the goals achieved, but then there are specific things that I have to do and we will go into that uh, what specific things have to be done. Then so, so, this becomes cumulative that is to get to mil 3 you have to satisfy mil 1 and all answers of mil 2 and all answers of mil 3 right and so on so forth. So, so this is how the maturity progresses. So, so there are specific names also to remember what each maturity level indicates. So, remember the maturity is about progression uh, in some sense right. So, higher maturity means I have progressed beyond the previous maturity level right. So, that is the idea. So, you see that mil 0 means incomplete that is some goals are not achieved right in a domain it domain is considered incomplete if the in domain that domain some goals are not achieved. Now, if all goals are achieved in a particular domain then we say that that domain is performed that is I am performing the practices as required to achieve the goals. Now, mil 2 is called planned. Now, what, what that that so remember that we said that in mil 1 uh, in mil 2. Uh, uh, what we did is that uh, if to get to mil 2 I have to answer certain questions on top of mil 1 right. Mil 1 means performed and then some additional questions. So, what are those questions? This here you will get the hints of what questions are being asked. So, we are saying that ok you are performing everything, but have you documented the practices and communicated to all who need to know. See, uh, one uh, the one of the biggest concern that we see in uh, like we have done for example, many ports audit right cyber audit. We find that depending on who is the CISO, who is the chairman, who is the uh, IT in charge etcetera the, the, the practices vary right, but that should not be the case right. So, all the ports should have same uh, kind of uh, cyber security practices being performed. So, so unless it is documented and communicated, it is communicable, 
then you cannot replicate elsewhere right because you then you have to really bring the actual person who is doing in one place to bring that person there and ask him to work again from scratch to get that place uh, bring to the same maturity level that is not practical right so therefore i have to make sure that the person it is documented and communicable so it can be replicated elsewhere then we are asking like whether there is a plan as to how the practice is performed. So, it is not like I am uh, you know because I, I know something I know how to do this practice, but if I leave then I this practice cannot be done uh, by the other people. So, there has to be a documented plan and it has to be supported by stakeholders that is the uh, do we know for each practice who are the stakeholders. So, in some cases the stakeholder could be the CISO in some cases a stakeholder could be some IT people who are managing the, the assets and services. It could be also users like people who will not uh, bypass uh, you know uh, authentication and things like that and are they aware of the practice and their role in the practice. So, so this has to be properly documented and then it should be supported by relevant standards and guidelines. So, I do not make practices out of thin air I do not say okay this from tomorrow this will be the, the you have to do this you have to do two factor authentication or we have to do you know uh, endpoint security solution agents on every machine it has to be supported by standards such as 27001 or guidelines like uh, NIST guideline or RBI guideline or SEBI guideline or uh, some other uh, certain guideline and so on. So, it has to have that support. So, if you have all this in additional to the fact that you are doing the practices then you can get to mil 2 that is a planned you are in a planned maturity. Uh, then the next one is the managed to be managed you have to do all the practices plus you everything has to be documented planned stakeholder communicated and so on. On top of that this particular maturity level talks about governance. So, is the practice supported by policy and appropriate oversight over performance of the practice. So, see the difference here and this is important to understand here we are saying that the practice is documented and communicable right. I am not saying that the, so, say so yeah here it is still kind of dependent on the CISO and the team that is doing it they are they are basically documenting it and they are communicating it hopefully everybody is listening to the CISO and, and so on. So, therefore, it is working out, but it is still not governed by the organization that is if this practice documentation is not uh, kind of uh, scripted into a policy and a po when, when we use the word policy we use um, you know little bit more uh, uh, significance to, to, the, uh, to the term policy because the policy uh, a document does not become policy until it is adopted by the organization through its highest executive uh, uh, authorities right like the board of govern governors or board of directors they have to actually consider this and, and say that from now on we accept this as policy and therefore, it is binding on everybody in the organization and if they are found to be uh, you know uh, in violation of any of the policy then they will be uh, subject to some penalty and that penalty may also be written into the policy that they may be suspend depending on the level of violation they may be fined suspended uh, you know their increments may be may be uh, reduced uh, whatever right their appraisal may be uh, affected whatever that should be in the policy. So, that is the appropriate oversight over the performance of the practice if any of the practices are not performed as per the policy the policy should also state what would be the penalty and such things should be actually have legally binding that is if the if it is adopted by the board then it becomes within the organization the law right it is a law of the organization uh, uh, is appropriately staffed and funded. So, this is another thing see here the CISO might 
say I am, I am going to work 24 hours a day to make this uh, all these practices work, I am going to work extra to make the documentation and so on and next CISO goes to another organization, new CISO comes, he says you know uh, I am gonna, I am not going to do all this, I am going to uh, take it easy. So therefore, the organization should be properly staffed and funded, right. Otherwise, if it depends on uh, this factor that CISO has to do all this uh, because uh, there he does not have enough funding and stuff, then it is not unlikely to be sustained, right. So, it has to be sustainable so by properly staffed and funded which means the top level CEO or, or a such level have, have supported the cause, supported the cyber security cause or resilience cause. Uh, is assigned staff who are responsible and accountable for the performance uh, of the practice. So, there is uh, you know it should not be like you know whoever is doing whatever right, it has to be properly accountable, proper accountability should be there. And then finally is uh, uh, you know are the staff adequately trained to perform the practice right. So, this is the biggest hurdle nowadays because getting properly trained cyber security professional is very difficult and very expensive and therefore, uh, this is getting uh, harder and now what has happened in India is that. So, um, with NCIPC with, uh, uh, with in a project with uh, QCI quality council of India, they have not only come up with some policy guidelines for critical infrastructure, but they also have created a very elaborate uh, requirements for what it means to be trained at what level, right. For what kind of job roles in the cyber security, what kind of training, what topics uh, they have drilled down to the very topic level and that is a very important document that is, that is going to be notified uh, soon. So, hopefully it will be adopted by many organizations and there would be also training organizations that will come up. These training organizations will get accreditation from QCI quality council of India to train people according to this right. So, that is the idea. So, anyway so, so this is what it takes to be MIL 3. So, MIL 3 is beyond the fact that it is planned, but it is also governed by the organization with the organizational support at the highest level and with proper adequate staff and staff uh, accountability and training. So, that is the MIL 3. There is few more that uh, periodically uh, sorry is managed for risk. So, risk assessment is properly performed and uh, you know identified uh, etcetera, etcetera. Now, next one MIL 4 is measured right. So, yesterday uh, uh, in the previous class I told you about this uh, policy about procurement right and we said that the, there is a elaborate uh, documented communicated governed uh, uh, you know uh, policy about procurement, but we do not measure it at least I am not aware that we measure its effectiveness right whether it actually produces what it is supposed to produce that is uh, the price discovery. So, if the if you can say that all the practices are not only performed well planned, managed, governed and monitored and controlled. So, this monitoring and controlled is what comes here measured. So, periodically evaluated for effectiveness, monitored and controlled and objectively evaluated against its practice description and plan and periodically reviewed with higher level of management. So, the CISO goes to the board and says that ok here are the goals in this domain for this critical service and here is where we are and uh, you know we may need to change something uh, in our policy or in our plans and uh, you know uh, or I may need more funding for more uh, staff whatever. So, that practice if that practice is periodic periodically reviewed with high level management then and the fact that you are actually evaluating its effectiveness then you are at the mill four that is measured. So, the last the topmost maturity level 
uh, they are performed, planned, managed, monitored, controlled and now we are saying it is consistent across all internal constituencies who have vested interest in the performance of the practice. So, this is this basically says that the same is replicated across the various units of the organization. So, so an organization may have multiple units, uh, so it says defined by the organization and tailored by organizational units for their use and supported by improvement information collected by and shared among organizational units for overall benefit of the organization. So, different subgroups or subunits or whatever of the organization there has to be uh, you know they should actually go by the same policy and same uh, practices and plans, but they can tailor and then they should also any kind of improvement is made is then collected and shared among all the all the organizations. So, that everybody gets the benefit of this. So, this is the fifth level of maturity. Now, this is how the CRR decided or this is how the uh, uh, US uh, um, you know RMM the resili resiliency maturity model defines maturity. It, it is you will if you read another maturity model like C 2 M 2 it is different like it is not necessarily uh, they are defined exactly in the same way, but usually they have a progression of different maturity levels. So, now let us look at the actual thing that we uh, went through last year uh, last to last year. Here is the asset management. So, the remember asset management had 7 goals and in November 2022 we found that services are identified and prioritized it is fully green uh, I think which means all the all the practices for identifying which asset goes into which services uh, cause all that stuff is done. Whereas, assets are inventoried and authority and responsibility of these assets are established, two practices seems to be incomplete, yellow means incomplete means it is being done, but not fully. The relationship between assets and services they support is established that seems to be fine, asset inventory is managed. Now, this asset inventory at that time if I remember correctly was a spreadsheet. Right. So, spreadsheet cannot be easily managed right, because it can be replicated. So, if you have a database which is highly guarded and only uh, people who are in charge of that database is allowed to uh, uh, update that database and so on, then it can be managed, but if it is a uh, if it is an excel sheet it can be copied around right. So, it is not managed and multiple copies means there will be inconsistency right. Access to assets is managed, this is uh, almost there, but there may seems to be some cases this is not uh, proper some some practices seem to be missing. And then uh, information assets are categorized and managed like which one is uh, critical, which one is not critical and so on. So, that seems to be a uh, little bit of lacking and the facility assets are prioritized and managed that seems to be uh, fine. So, you see the in asset management we are yellow, because the domain will get the color that is the lowest color of all the different goals right. So, then the next one is uh, the control management, in control management we seem to be uh, not so good. So, we have like uh, out of 4 goals, none of the goals are fully green at that time and it is majority incomplete. Right. So, this is something that is of concern. In terms of the, uh, uh, the configuration and uh, change management, it seems that life cycle of asset is managed, asset configuration baselines are established. This one uh, I do not know if stick files and all are being used uh, for benchmarking and or not, but at least that is what uh, the uh, collected data. Now, remember each of these domains was done by different groups and some groups are more serious, they actually probed lot more than the other group like you know whatever right. So, so I am not I mean do not take this 
the evaluation results seriously right first of all it is old second is that groups are uh, groups were of different quality different training and all the stuff plus these are novice basically they are not like see uh, they are not like homeland security security cyber resilience experts so take it more like a, uh, as an illustrative example and not uh, exactly what uh, the real situation is now then this is also yellow this this domain is also yellow now we have vulnerability management here we see that there are problem that we have reds now if we have reds that means that the entire uh, thing become red right so now now if we go uh, further we have uh, here uh, i think service continuity management service oh so before that i think we missed something here which is uh, incident well after vulnerability we have incident management incident management is quite lacking here you know in terms of uh, lot of red so entire incident management gets red service continuity management also for this small thing becomes red and then we have the uh, risk management risk management is yellow and then i have uh, you know uh, external dependency management seems to be yellow as well and then awareness uh, is yellow and uh, situational awareness that is we do not have a SOC so obviously situational awareness is low so it will be red now what now what good, good is it note that uh, I mean as, I'm, as I said repeatedly that uh, do not take it they take it with a grain of salt about the real status of the situation, but what it what good is such a, a real you know if we assuming that it was done by real experts and assuming this is a true picture what can we say here. So, here you see this is a low hanging fruit if I want to make this guy green I can easily do this because I have only a little bit of practices that are incomplete right. Uh, now I have situational awareness I get the idea that it is in a real bad shape so I have to do something about it but it is not a low hanging fruit it probably will require a lot of uh, activity budget uh, buying uh, expensive uh, SOC and all that stuff and then if you look at this uh, one this also requires a lot of work uh, so I will start with for example. So, I have to decide like which where I should start with. So, I would st probably start with uh, asset management and then I will also try to at the same time I try to fix this red and, and then this red and so on. So, so, this will give you a picture of where we are and how to now go about approaching the uh, you know better maturity. So, I actually uh, see that we do not have a single goal which is uh, green do we, do we have so none of the domains are green so now then the maturity level is actually zero right now it also gives you more uh, information so in order to like in order to know the maturity question so those are questions about practices so, for each of these there are also maturity questions the questions for uh, maturity level 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 are different and you see that in asset management we are uh, not so bad in the sense that uh, we have uh, uh, now you see that the, this is red this is red this is red because I am not even at this maturity level. So, all these things are read by because I have to answer all this in green only then if I see here I am partially answering this to green and, and these are also partial, but I am still red because in order to make this even yellow I need to get this as green right. So, this gives you a very visual idea about where we are standing and where uh, you know what where to start the improvement. So, this is uh, uh, you know the for each of these uh, you know so we see that you know where we are with respect to this 
uh, questions. It also tells you in the NIST previous NIST, NIST 1.1 framework where we are with respect to what is my score. So, NIST framework like remember we said NIST framework has identify, protect, uh, detect, uh, respond and recover right and now uh, NIST 2.0 has govern also. So, in each of these there are also sub categories like for example, identification asset management is part of the identification because you are identifying assets. Uh, the business environment you have to identify your business environment because that tells you what services are critical, what services are not critical and what is your threat environment and so on. In the previous version of uh, uh, NIST also governance was part of identification, risk assessment is part of identification and risk management strategy is another part of identification. So, in this we are seeing that we are actually uh, you know how we are doing with respect to these uh, sub uh, uh, sub categories of identify function. Clearly, we are not fully doing identify function we are 57 percent into the identification function whereas, in the protect we are at 53 percent. So, these numbers are not important what it is showing you is that by doing this evaluation assessment you can actually get a rough approximate idea about where we are with respect to uh, each of these. So, each of the NIST functionality. So, if you were like 100 percent in each of these then you could have said that uh, you know I am NIST I am very NIST compliant I am NIST CSF compliant right. That is not that is a very tall order even the best banks probably will not get 100 percent in each of these, but they might get close. So, so that is where the NIST this thing it also tells you uh, you know uh, uh, the uh, it gives you another view of you know which questions you are missing uh, which questions you answered partial which questions you answered no. So, that gives you a overall view. So, these are for after assessment analysis by the CISO and his team or her team to decide how to go about fixing all this right whatever is missing. So, that uh, uh, and they also have to make a goal right. So, for example, uh, some organizations they will say uh, will first fix the uh, most uh, critical ones uh, the ones that uh, uh, and then will will fix the ones that are uh, less critical and so on. Some will say ok uh, will first fix low hanging fruits then the um, ones that will require a lot of investment and, and uh, manpower etcetera expertise to fix so that kind of stuff. So, you see this graph. So, this graph is actually where you are with respect to the four uh, domains uh, this is the for the different uh, mill. Uh, so, you are almost there if, if mill 1 the one that is showing uh, very poorly is situational awareness you are less than 50 percent. Uh, in some of these you are almost there there uh, you are above three fourth incident management also you are actually just like about 60 percent maybe 57 56 percent vulnerability management you are configuration management you are doing almost there and asset management you are not too bad. So, you have to use these graphs to decide how you are going to go about planning your next 3 months, 6 months and so on and you have to present that to your top level executives to show where you are and where you know where you want to be. So, you may actually draw this additional color here saying that where you will be in quarter and in the next quarter and where you will be in the next quarter and so on. So, that you have a plan. So, this is another another view of percentage uh, percentage of uh, uh, practices completed. So, you see that in the controls management we are less than 20 percent in the incident management we are we are less than 40 percent and 
in the situational awareness also we are less than 20 percent. So, these are some of the major concerns and this is the view that your board will like to see and uh, you know uh, and ask you that show me in the next quarter board meeting where you will be uh, where you are and th at that time show this graph also. If we see no improvement then we are going to uh, you, you will lose your job. Uh, unfortunately, CISOs do not easily lose their job because I asked uh, one of the board members of a bank and he said I can fire the CISO, but where will I get the next one right. So, there is not enough well trained people for CISO. So, therefore, if you want to uh, become a CISO you have a good chance you will make a lot of money except that it takes some time it may be may it may take you 10 years to become a CISO you will not get a CISO job right away unless it is a very small company. Uh, but uh, uh, the, the CISO's job is to actually make this thing better to the level where all this uh, things should be around here or maybe even higher right. So, that is where the uh, visualization will help him to show that he is making progress right. So, this is uh, further analysis of uh, where these things are and so on uh, we will not go get into the details of that. But you get the idea about where uh, you know how these things work and since uh, we did not get a chance for you to uh, uh, you to do this uh, yourself we are uh, I just wanted to show you what it looks like if you do this. This is a pretty large document, but most of this is automatically filled by the script. See as you answer the questions everything else comes by automatically this is the beauty of this uh, instrumentation of this PDF. So, you do not have to do all this and you get something that you can show your management that this is where we are and then next time you do it you show where you are you show the two graphs uh, side by side and that shows the progress you have made over a quarter or over two quarters whatever you are you have done. So, that is that is where we are with respect to this uh, um, um, with respect to this. So, I am I am I am not. So, I have uh, slides uh, discussing all this that I just discussed what are the different MIL uh, scales uh, you know incomplete performed planned managed me measured and defined what they are and also uh, how to do uh, self assessment you have to decide whether you are going to scope based on service or you want to scope based on uh, uh, organization. And then you know what are the key roles like there would be a sponsor usually who would have a broad understanding and important uh, of importance and uh, components of the service for which the self assessment is being done. So, usually it is the owner of that particular service there would be a facilitator either from inside the organization or from the homeland security and then there would be subject matter experts will interpret the questions for you because you may not even know what it means to do something like a asset uh, you know assign an as, uh, or uh, connect an asset to a particular service or what it means to do control uh, you know defining the controls and so on and so forth. So, you need subject matter experts then you basically decide who are the subject matter experts and participants for each of these domains. Not every domain the guys who are involved in an organization in asset management may not be doing risk management or incident management right. So, obviously, it would be different set of people there may be some intersection uh, there. And then you normally do this in a workshop mode. So, you bring everybody together and you actually do a workshop day long workshop. So, you have to tell what are the terms and, and terminology that you use, uh, what are the services that you are going to put in the assessment like not necessarily all services uh, may be assessed, uh, what are the what is the organizational environment uh, context, uh, what are the implemented practices what when when do you say and a practice is implemented when do you say it is not and then response scale like yes no or partial and uh, then some follow on activities what you will do after the assessment is completed you generate the report then what are you going to do after that 
So, then you know we, we went through this interpreting the self assessment report. So, we, you know some basic rules of uh, we already went through this and uh, we already discussed that if you do not if you get all the uh, so, we are in the, the report that I showed you is mil 0. So, some goals are achieved uh, mil 1 is that all goals are achieved. So, we did not get any of the uh, any in the report that I showed uh, there was not a single domain at mil 1 and unless you are in mil 1 you cannot be mil 2, mil 2 requires additional uh, questions and so on and so forth. So, we discussed this and this is how the performance summary looks like we already looked at this. So, so that is it. So, we will uh, uh, we'll stop here for the resilience uh, review uh, part of the uh, course and now we will move on to next class we will move on to uh, the threat intelligence sharing uh, with sticks. So, that is where uh, uh, I think that is more or less where we will be. Uh, next week we may do some uh, evening classes additional evening classes uh, uh, to finish this curriculum ok thank you.